to the LACC Gala, which took place this year at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. We will meet with singer-songwriter David Vines on our Off the Red Line segment. Also, Desiree Valencourt shines a light on the Friends to Veterans Foundation. The Geffen Contemporary at the Museum of Contemporary Arts, otherwise known as MOCA in Little Tokyo, is home to the first ever Hello Kitty convention in the world. This and much more coming up on Los Angeles Community Connection. Welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection. I'm Neil. And I'm Emily. On November the 3rd at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, the Los Angeles City Con uh, College Foundation celebrated 85 years of the community. This prestigious event was attended by alumni and organizations that have a strong commitment to the college. During this event, the foundations honored David and Meryl Alpert, philanthropists, and Lula Bolton, the co-founder of the West Los Angeles Community Development Corporation. All proceeds of the gala will be used to fund scholarships and provide other means of support. In order to continue to help my family, which is just been a huge Fall has arrived, but in SoCal, warm, dry commitment. We are going to continue our scholarship and hope that so much money comes in to help all these <coughs> young people people who are not just graduates of high school, but people who want a college education to please come to LA City College. They'll never forget it. In October, the average temperature was 63.8. That's a record for that time period and more than four degrees higher than the average 59.8 degrees. The recent reef rainfall improved stream flows, braved some river levels and spurred the growth of small plants and grasses but it barely made a dent on the water levels. The US drought monitor stated that the percentage of the state is in severe drought had slightly improved from covering 95.4% of the state at the end of September to 94.42. The percentage of California under exceptional drought improved, falling from 58.41 of the state to 55.08. Desiree Valancourt joins us to talk about a local Veterans Foundation. Desiree? Thank you, Emily. As we pass over Veterans Day again, we are looking at some really great organizations that are helping our veterans and their families get back on their feet and also help them have a really good time. Friends to Veterans has some really great bluegrass jams and support for our vets. So let's join them. Veterans, can we hear it for our veterans, please? Building eight houses, giving them Harley. Those are so important to those guys. You know, well, I was talking to board member Randy uh, of the Joshua Chamber Society uh, Friday, and he says, you know, everybody else builds things for them. He says, but there's another need that they have, and that's giving them something to give them freedom. Be a part of Norma of it, and that's so important. And that's what these two organizations that I push or do. And there's others like uh, uh, Guitars for Vets. They go into every uh, hospital, veteran hospital, they give a guitar to a guy and they teach him to play it on it. And I was talking to a psychologist uh, at, I worked the voting booth, I worked, uh, the psychologist told me one of the best ways to, for PTSD is to give them an instrument because it uses every part of their body to regroup and retrain. You can talk to them, you can do a lot of things, but give them an instrument, let them play. It's the fastest way to get over it and to live a normal life. Being around the music and the people that play the music, what it does, it really there's a little bit of a transformation there. Even, even if they're not necessarily interested in pursuing learning an instrument full time or something to that effect, 
it's still just uh, music does something to people, it really touches them. So it's, uh, it's an excellent way for, for us to reach out. I really want to take some, some before and after pictures of the veterans and their families on this cruise, this next cruise coming up in, in January, which is, uh, I guess, January 25th. So you really feel like this cruise helps mend some hearts? Oh, yeah. Through no, no question about it. It's, 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 it's a really, you know, it's a small price to pay to mend a heart. Hello, and thank you again for joining us on the Queen Mary here, celebrating Friends to Veterans. This is Desiree Valacor reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection, and we'll see you next time. When we return, we'll hear about China and the United States' new agreement on climate change. We will be right back after a short break. Hello, I am Dr. Shyan Mustafa, geophysicist with the USGS. Earthquakes in California can strike anywhere, anytime, causing major damage to our structures, roads, and lives. Prepare to survive by practicing how to drop, cover, and hold on. Create an earthquake emergency kit that includes an emergency backpack with food and water, a radio, and a first aid kit. And last, but certainly not least, prepare a family disaster plan. Remember, don't be scared, be prepared. For more information, log on to www.ready.gov. Welcome back. President Barack Obama has approved sending up to 1,500 more troops to Iraq, almost doubling the number of US forces on the ground. Some of these soldiers will head into the Iraq's fiercely contested Western Anabar province to act as advisors for the first time. This move raises the stakes in Obama's first interactions with Congress after the Democratic Party was thumped back by Republicans in this year's midterm elections. The White House said it, it would ask Congress for $1.6 billion for a new Iraq train and equip fund. Alarmed by the advance of Islamic State militants across Iraq, Obama began sending non-combat troops back into Iraq for the first time since he withdrew US forces from the country in 2011. About 1,400 US troops are now on the ground just below the previous limit of 1,600 troops. The new authorization gives the US military the ability to deploy up to 3,100 troops. Kirby said that many of the additional American troops will be dedicated to securing bases where training and advising would take place, but he cautioned that America's troops still face Commander-in-Chief has authorized Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel to deploy up uh, to deploy to Iraq up to 1,500 additional U.S. personnel over the coming months in a non-combat role to expand our advise and assist mission and initiate a comprehensive training effort for Iraqi forces. U.S. Central Command will establish two expeditionary advise and assist operation centers in locations outside of Baghdad and Erbil to provide support for the Iraqis at the brigade headquarters level and above. These centers will be supported by an appropriate array of force protection capabilities. The two largest emitters of greenhouse gases, consisting 39% of the world's emissions, the United States of America and China have finally come to a groundbreaking historical agreement. With Chinese President Xi Jinping by his side, President Obama stated at a press conference. This is a major milestone in the U.S.-China relationship. And it shows what's possible when we work together on an urgent global challenge. China, whose emissions... 
Under the agreement, the United States would cut its 2005 level of carbon emissions by 26 to 28 percent. Before the year 2025, China would peak its carbon emissions by 2030 and would also aim to get 20 percent of its energy from zero carbon emission sources by the same year. The Center for Climate and Energy Solutions believes the joint announcement is a hopeful sign and should bring other countries to follow. For those pitball owners in Los Angeles, there is a group that will help find resources and education for you. The Los Angeles Responsible Pit Bull Owners launched in February 2011 to bring together responsible pit bull owners in the greater Los Angeles area. Their mission is to join together in a group activities, events, pit bull advocacy, education, training classes, and community outreach in order to promote a positive image of bully breeds. With so much controversies surrounding the bully breeds today, our focus is not only to increase awareness to the issues that affect pit bulls and their ownership, but to work together to be a part of the solution. Our goal with Los Angeles Responsible Pit Bull Owners is to gather pit bull loving friends and owners as a community, a community dedicated to making a stand for our best friends and strive to do so much with the same fun-loving outlook that our dogs have in life. Domestic violence doesn't know anything about discrimination. It could affect anyone regardless of age, race, gender, or sexual orientation. Only in the U.S., one in three women and one in four men suffer from domestic violence, and more than 10 million people are affected each year. Domestic violence doesn't stop at physical violence. It includes sexual assault, intimidation, and emotional abuse. Together we can't stop domestic violence. A better home, a better world starts from home. If you or someone you know is going through this, please call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Or you can also visit the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence website at www.ncadv.org for more information. Because, because love, love shouldn't, shouldn't hurt. hurt. Welcome back. Coming up next, Jade was at location at the Los Angeles Convention Center at the Game Developers Conference. Jade, what did you see? It was an amazing experience seeing all these apps and new technology. What especially caught my attention is the 3D tablet called Flight Deck. We are here today at the GDC featuring ADC at the Los Angeles Convention Center in downtown LA. We're going to take a look around and we're going to take a closer look at the company Freebie and their 3D tablet flight deck. I have technology manager Anthony right here with me. Thank you so much for your time. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Flight Deck and the 3D development? Well, Flight Deck initially came about, we wanted to create uh, a, a new device that will really change the way 3D technology is perceived and done. Um, we, we created this tablet with the uh, idea of eliminating all of the negative aspects that come along with 3D technology, all of the drawbacks. So we devoted a lot of time, we devoted a few years, and we actually were able to develop a tablet that doesn't face any of the drawbacks and the setbacks that normal 3D has, eye fatigue and latency and things like that, so it doesn't affect you. And it's a more real experience. And we've upgraded the technology so far advanced and so far beyond what anybody else has created that we have literally turned 3D from being something that used to be a novelty to something that can easily be in every single house in America. That's very impressive. Thank you so much. And um, I heard you guys have a challenge going on today. What's that about? Yes, the World Developer Challenge. This is a big new thing. So one of the main drawbacks of 3D, one of the big reasons that not more people do anything in 3D is for a lack of content. 
Now, we've all heard the common thing, content is king. Well, 3D has no content, and there's none out there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all developers, anybody who has created an app, anybody who has an app, or anybody who has an idea for an app who just needs some funding or they want to be involved in something bigger than themselves, you come in and you submit your ideas, you join the challenge, and enter into a $1 million funding pool. So we'll, we'll review your challenge, we'll look at it, and we will really break it, break it down and give you the ability to get money to build something and create something for the 3D world. And once we get all of this content, then 3D really will be on the forefront and beyond everything else. All right, I hope a lot of people are gonna participate in your challenge and thank you so much for your time. This is a Flight Deck Commander 3D made by Freebie. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see it on the screen, but this device is actually able to render back 3D stereoscopic content with a lot of depth and dimension. Unfortunately, you're not gonna see that on your screen because you're only viewing in 2D right now. Other than that, this tablet runs as a fully functional Android-based tablet. So if you're viewing any 2D material, you'll actually see it in a high-res 1080p, just like any other device. Still fully functional tablet, however, like I said, if you do have that 3D stereoscopic content, you're able to play it back, whether it's side-by-side -side or top and bottom stereoscopic content, simply by viewing through this device. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Jade reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection. I'm looking forward to seeing the 3D tablet from Freebie hit the store soon because this is really a big step forward in technology and simply an amazing gadget to use. I'm already excited to go to the next year's GDC and discover what's new with technology. Scientists may be on the verge of cloning a long thought extinct animal the woolly mammoth. South Korean scientists believe the extinct mammothuthus can be brought back to life using the DNA of an extremely well-preserved mammoth that was found in the Siberian snow. Carbon, dating back to the female mammoth nicknamed Buttercup, lived around sorry, 43,000 years ago. However, this particular carcass discovered in May 2013 on a remote Siberian island has something more other, what other fossils don't have, blood. In fact, the mammoth, meat, the mammoth meat was reported fresh enough that one of the scientists took a bite of it. In the past, mammoths have yielded only a few dried specks of blood and none of them left enough intact for a DNA cloning experiment. Whether or not we should be doing this is an ethical debate. The process would require a surrog surrog surrogate elephant mother to carry the mammoth for 22 months and the animal may not even survive. Furthermore, Mammoths are social creatures, but the clone will be probably be forced to live in an artificial and lonely environment such as a zoo. Others think that the scientific information could be gleaned from such an endeavour outweigh the ethical considerations. Gear up everybody! Los Angeles is celebrating Hello Kitty's 40th anniversary at their first Hello Kitty convention in Los Angeles. Hello Kitty Con will be taking place at one of our favorite places, the Museum of Contemporary Art in downtown. Fun for all ages, this party is going to exhibit interactive experiences and events for fans that includes art, exhibitions, exclusives, workshops, lecturers, panels, sneak peeks, tattoos, food, and tons of fun. Make new friends and go to Hello Kitty Con. Following this expose, State Senator Kevin DeLeon introduced a bill intended to curb, curb abuses of this kind described in the Times article. SB 911 would require local agencies to post annual reports on their websites detailing how much bond money they had collected and spent and describing the statuses of bond funded construction projects. It, the money does not belong to some college stars or college presidents, DeLeon said in an interview. The waste in LA College construction program could make it difficult to go back to taxpayers for approval for future bond measures, he said. Every week we bring in people from outside and inside the campus who inspire us. This week is no different. Janae Henry invited singer-songwriter David Vines into our studio for an exclusive interview on our segment, Off the Red Line.
Hello, and welcome to Off the Red Line. I'm your host, Janae Henry. Today, we have singer-songwriter David Vines by way of Virginia to share his story, inspiration, and dreams. Thank you for being on the show today, David. Thank you for having me today. So tell us a little bit about how music has been an influence. Well, music has always been, you know, from the time that I was a little kid, you know, one of the biggest inspiring factors in my life. Uh, my mother used to always play the old school records, the Marvin Gaye's and the Temptations, Stevie Wonders, and you know, that's really what, uh, what kicked it all off for me, as far as music. Where do you get your inspirations to write? Well, I really just write, it's two sides of it. I'm a songwriter, I write for other artists as well. Mm -hmm. So when I'm writing for them, I'm really trying to just get inside their mind and write from their perspective. Um, it's kind of a sociology type of, yeah. you know, thing. But when I'm writing for myself, it's more, it's, it's all personal. It's things that I've experienced or things that, uh, it's about relations, it's about connecting with people. And I think that that's, words are powerful. And that's just how, how, it, uh, how my songwriting is born. Okay. What do you currently have going on in the next step of your, in your career? Well, it's a lot of things. You know, I've been out here in L.A. for a while now, seven years, and I have a band. We okay. performed at a lot of locations out here. We've done the House of Blues. We did the Viper Room. Um, a lot of different venues, you know, where we're definitely performing. And we actually just had a really big show. Um, it was at the Think Tank Art Gallery in downtown L.A. Mm -hmm. And we searched for all the best artists, and by art, I mean painting, uh, drawers, uh, illustrators. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we found some of the most talented ones in L.A., and we ended up selecting 22 of them, and all their art hung up in the gallery. And we uh, had performances as well. There were four bands, and I headlined the event. Uh, it was my, own, my first headlining event, and we're actually going to do it annually now because of the success of it. We had almost 250 uh, guests, so it was a great event. Um, so that's what I've been up to in my career, just uh, looking to spread my art on an international playing field. So tell us a little bit about your first album, Fly 7:35. That's right. That's the first album. Um, Fly 7:35 is because 7:35 is the name of the flight, well, the flight number when I first moved out here. You know, I packed up all my bags and uh, I left college uh, back east. I wasn't happy with the route that I was taking. I felt that I deserved the opportunity to pursue what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So I gave that up. Um, I bought a one-way ticket. I saved 2000 for my job and I just moved to LA on my own. Um, I didn't have any friends or family, so it was a crazy experience. It's been crazy. And uh, this album pretty much details a lot of lessons that I learned in life and in love in the time that I've been out here. Tell me a little bit about the opportunity you have from Pandora. I hear you got a yeah, really wow. good offer. Crazy. Um, I'm an indie artist, as I said. Um, I have an indie label that I'm starting called Eudaimonia Records, and this is the first release from it. Eudaimonia is a Greek philosophy, which means the art of human flourishing. And this album was picked up by Pandora almost two years after I initially released it uh, for free via my website, IamDavidBynes.com. And uh, it was free, and now two years later, Pandora has, well, it will go live on Pandora by the end of the year. Um, but they really enjoyed the album. Um, it's also on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Play, uh, Rhapsody, I mean, it's, it's starting to spread, wow. so I'm, I'm excited about it, for sure. A blessing. It is. <laughs> so, um, with you being a singer-songwriter, let me know, let me hear a little bit of your music, like, okay. give us a cappella or something, give us a little something. One love. Okay. I don't want your money, I just want your heart, you bring us together, who could tear us apart? Cause I'm your brother from the very start. Can we say one love, one love? Nice. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. And there you have it. I am Janae Henry. Thank you all for tuning in to Off the Red Line. After the break, we have more news from Los Angeles Community Connections. Stay tuned. Thanks so much, David, for coming. Thank you. I am DavidVines.com. Hi, I'm Rushark, and I'm a feminist. <laughs> yes, I believe the collaboration between women, men and women is needed to ensure gender equality around the world. A look back at history illustrates that women have made great strides against the fight for equality. 
including women's suffrage, equality in the workplace, and equal opportunity in education. However, gender bias continues in the USA and around the world. Therefore, we are in need of a solidarity movement for gender equality. And that's when the He For She Foundation comes in. The He For She Foundation is a solidarity movement that brings in one half of humanity for the other half of humanity. Because gender equality is not only a women's issue, but a human rights issue that requires your participation. Please join us at our campaign, www.heforshe.org. Thank you. Welcome back. Fugitive Eduardo Rodriguez was captured by US Marshals on Thursday at Farnham Place in Riverside, where he'd been living under an assumed identity for five years. He's been wanted on the, on the LAPD watch list since 2003. Rodriguez, who worked under Timothy McGee, was second in command of the notorious Tunerville Street Gang when he was indi indicted in 2003 on four counts of murder and two counts of attempted murder. McGee was convicted of three numbers, but is believed to have killed at least a dozen people. Rodriguez was wanted in connection with the 2000 shooting of Margie Mendoza, a mother of three who was gunned down in Atwater Village while sitting in her boyfriend's car. Information on the deaths tied to the other mur three murders in Dickmans was not re immediate released. Captured by US Marshals, LAPD consider Rodriguez as one of the most wanted criminals who has been wanted since 2003. While he was on the run, authorities say that Rodriguez lived under an assumed identity working as a carpenter in Riverside. Rodriguez had a fiancé and often visited Las Vegas and the Griffiths Observatory. The case was reignited last year when Glendale police asked Los Angeles detectives to try to find Rodriguez. During this time, one of the Glendale detectives who was on light duty found Rodriguez's pictures through his associate's Facebook when he images showed up on Rodriguez's Facebook account, they tracked him down to Riverside address and began monitoring the house. Busy to go to the theater to see the new release? No problem. The Weinstein Company, Netflix and IMAX caused quite a stir earlier this week when they announced they were partnering to distribute Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Green Legend, exclusive and simultaneous through the streaming service and in theaters worldwide. Its decision has Several major theatre chains, including Regal, Cinema, Mark and AMC Theatres, angry over a plot to cut them out of the distribution process and are refusing to screen the film. Releasing a new film both in theatres and through on-demand isn't unheard of, but the suddenness of TWC's decision to try this untestified, untested means of film distribution with sequel as eagerly anticipated as The Winter Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is unprecedented. You can't really blame studios for looking at ways to help their dwindling box office grosses. Los Angeles Community Connections strives to give a voice to our community. Jaylene joins us this week to share her opinion on campus vending machines. Vending machines, vending machines, vending machines. Those darn vending machines. Los Angeles City College owns a few of them things. Sometimes we students don't feel like crossing the Sahara Desert just to go to the Student Union to buy snacks and a cold beverage. Unfortunately, these contraptions don't always work at a student's convenience or expense. They be eating up your hard-earned cash and even if it's only a few bucks. Money is money as far as I'm concerned. There are times I go to one and insert a buck, a quarter, and when a certain item isn't available, it basically keeps your money. There are moments where it imperatively requests for exact change, and that don't always work either. They never responsive, and you're basically tapped out of a few bucks. That money could have been used for bus fare, printing copies of an assignment. The vending machine supervisors don't really help out either. Their only job is to place the food and beverages into the machine and collect the money out of the sockets. I thought this college is for the students. Where's the help that is needed here? Thank you for joining us. You can find us on Facebook at LACC TV or on Twitter at LACC underscore TV. I'm Neil Kumar. And I'm Emily Barrett. Thank you so much for watching Los Angeles Community Connection.